Hey guys, so we've gone through simple interest. And the simple interest, while yeah, it's pretty easy to do, I equals PRT, um, it's actually probably not so common in the real world. Um, most financial institutions like banks, if they're lending money, or if you put your money into a bank, you'll actually be using what's called compound interest. So the version of interest that we've been working on the last few lessons, where we're earning interest on top of interest. It's not just that initial interest amount that keeps getting repaid across the years. So um, what I want to introduce you to today is this formula. It is the compound interest formula. Um, it looks large, it looks scary, but in essence, it's nothing really all that new. We are working with I, interest, principal, the rate, the time, and N is probably the new one that we're going to be looking at, but I'll explain that momentarily. And we're also going to be substituting values, so replacing values. When we were using the I equals PRT, so interest equals principal times rate times time, substituting values, well, if I was, say, had an interest rate of 8%, a principal of $1,000, and three years time, i just substitute those values. $1,000, 0.088%, and three years time. I'd multiply the three and I'd get my interest. So we're going to be doing a similar thing just with a compound interest formula. So simple interest formula was a little bit easier. This one's slightly more complex, but I'll take you through that today. So hopefully you guys are fairly comfortable with using it. Um, what I need to speak to you about first is the difference between T, time, and N, the number of times interest is compounded. Um, the other things, how much interest is earned, I, that value, same as when we're dealing with simple interest, as is P, the principal, and R. Now, again, I've got here in decimal form. We need to make sure that whenever we're calculating anything um, to do with uh, interest rates, so our rate, we do it in decimal form. All right, so we're going to be doing that conversion before we start anything. So what I really need to go through is the difference between time, so T and N. Time, we usually look at it in terms of years. If I lend you, um, you know, if I borrow money from the bank for my mortgage, say, for example, T, my time that I borrow for, I've got a 25 year loan on my house. So that would be my T. But where, what the N is, is the number of times that interest is compounded. So it could be it compounds annually, so once per year. Twice per year, it could be monthly compounding, so 12 times per year. If it compounds 12 times per year, and I have a loan for one year, my T would be one year. My N, the number of times it compounds, would be 12, because there's 12 months in one year. Say, so for example, if I said it compounded every six months, and I have my loan for two years, the time would be two, and the N number of times interest is compounded per year, every six months, six months and six months make up one year, so it'd be two. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a breakdown of how, of the difference between T and N. So here's the example that I've got for you. If I go to a bank and I want to deposit money in a bank into a savings account, which will earn me interest, so earn me some money over time, if I have a thousand dollars that I deposit into my account and the bank's offering a rate of 5% interest and I plan to deposit it for three years and it compounds yearly, how much money am I going to have at the end of those three years? Basically, what I'm going to do, I'm going to substitute these values into my formula. So I've written it in. My principal being $1,000, I open up my bracket, one plus, now my interest rate, my R value, is 0 0.05, because remember, we like to work in decimals, not in percentages, so I've put that in as a decimal, 0 0.05 being 5%, divided by, now N, it compounds yearly, it compounds once per year, so my N value is one, I close my bracket, and N to the power of N, multiplied by T N once again, same value as that, compounds once a year for a time of three years. So I know that one times three, I can actually just change this figure here, this power, to three. So the amount of interest that I end up with, or in fact the amount that I 
finish with is $1,157.63. So um, I guess the question if I was asked how much interest did I earn? Well, I'll go this value here minus my initial principal. So it would be $157.63 in the three years that I invested that money. Um, the other way that this can actually be written instead of having I as the interest, because we're not actually, this, this value isn't actually my interest value, it's the amount that I end up with. It can also be represented as A, the amount that I actually end up with. So you'll also see it written like that. That's probably a more accurate way to put it. Um, but for the time being, I hope that helps you out a little bit. Um, that is basically compound interest.